again, very, very honored to uh, to get to speak before you again. Uh, I, I'm, I'm excited to, to see what the Lord has in store with this message. Uh, it's And even more than that, I'm excited that Pastor and Cindy got to be here today. It seems like I kind of started feeling like an oven because it seemed like every time I got to speak before you all or preach to you, it was because something bad happened and you all could be here. <laughs> so, so hopefully starting tonight we can change that. Hey, we, we won't picture, okay, Josh is speaking. Something happened. <laughs> um, but again, just just so glad to 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 be able to do this for you all and, and and for myself. And I find myself learning and growing each time that I I do this. And and you know I, I find that there are things that it, it, it's it's a shame that we can't do reruns because it, it, I, I guess I've always been my toughest critique. And when I go home, I'm like, man, I could have said that, or I should have done that right there. <laughs> But, you know, that's, that's how things go. Um, but more than anything, we just pray that the Lord has his way, you know, and that, and that there is, there's, there's no, there's nothing that stands in the way of that and that we're mindful of him. Um, I've explained to you all several times, I don't know why it's so burdened on my heart every single time I speak, so I have to say this because the Lord won't let me go any further. This altar is always open. It doesn't matter what we're doing up here, whether I'm singing a song, whether the pastor's preaching, it doesn't matter. Amen. This this altar is always open. Always, amen. And, and you know, it doesn't, again, it doesn't matter what's going on. You've got a problem, you've got a situation, you bring it here. And even if we have to stop what we're doing and pray with you, we will. That's what's most important in our church. Um, Dealing with this message, I'm not going to keep you long. I think I found uh, the first time I ever got to preach for you all, I said, well, I'd like to tell you that you're going to be here a long time, or I'd like to tell you that I don't take very long. I didn't know because I'd never done it before. <laughs> but um, I, I found myself to be pretty um, direct and to the point, and I, I say what matters, and then we just kind of continue to go on. But um this morning, it's the craziest thing because Sunday, the pastor asked me to, to bring the message to you all today. And, you know, all week, I thought, I know what I'm going to say. I know what I'm going to talk about. I know what I'm going to preach about. I've got it. I've got it. And I kept saying, you know what? I'm going to read over that message some and this and that. And it'll, it'll all just work out. It'll be fine. Well, I was here today. I, I done some work around the church and stuff today. And, um, this verse just kept coming to me. Bless him, Lord. And I kept thinking about it. And I and I thought, mm, I, I don't know. I'm not sure if that's because he he the Lord wants me to to use that tonight, or if that's something that because I already got my message planned. I mean, surely, Lord, you're not gonna change what I what I got. I mean, I'm an organized person, right? I've got it together. And but I kept thinking about that verse and I kept going in depth and it seemed like every time in my quiet time, the Lord would whisper that. Amen. And I kept thinking, all right, I'm going to go in the office in there, and I'm going to just read it through, and I'm going to see what happens. Well, sure enough, <laughs> I'll come up with this one today. <laughs> um, so I, I, maybe one day, you know, the, the message that I have prepared will be appropriate. That's right. Um, but evidently that was, that was not today. Um, so, again, I'm not going to keep you a long time. I want, and we're going to go through just some real familiar scripture. Uh, if you will, let's just get straight into it. Uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Let me know when you think. Also pretty exciting, the fact that uh, I think I only did, I've only spoke on a Thursday night one other time, and I feel so much more <coughs> relaxed, because <laughs> it's like, oh, you know, it's just the family tonight, just the family, we're just all hanging out, you know. <laughs> so we all found it, we all there? Amen. Okay. Just real quick, I'm going to read through this. Uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says, 
And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Our most gracious and heavenly Father, we turn to you one more time, Lord. Thanking you, Lord, for, for all of the blessings that you've already bestowed on us through this service, God. We thank you for each and everything that you've, you've given us in our lives, and we're, we're so grateful to you, Lord. Father, I thank you for your word, and I thank you for your understanding, and I thank you for, for the hunger that you've placed in me to know you more through your word, God. And I pray that, that this message doesn't go out void, Lord, and that, that we all can walk away and gain some knowledge from this tonight. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, now, so when I started, again, I kept thinking of this, this be not conformed to the ways of the world and, and this and that, and I kept thinking, man, I'm not sure what, what I, I'm supposed to be talking about. So I, I, I sat down, like I said today, and I, I looked through, and um, the first thing that, that jumped out to me is the word conformed. Now, what does the word conformed mean was my first thing. Of course, you know, you know, but do you really know? So I looked it up, <laughs> and the word, the word conformed, the actual dictionary, uh, the dictionary term for the word conformed is to comply, let's see, to comply with rules and standards or law. Okay, so in this verse, it, to, to conform means to comply, to, to follow. But in this verse, he says, be not conformed. So what that means is we're not to be, not, not, to, not, not to go with the laws and, and the ways of the world. Of the outside world, okay? So then I got to thinking, you know, why why would we not conform? Why why not conform? And there are several reasons, and we, we've kind of discussed that this evening. You know, first off, the world is full of sin. The world is full of evil. The world is full of problems. It's under Satan's rule. Um, it, it, and it's hostile to God and his people. And it's also, and this is the one that, when, as I've done my studies and, and I was reading that, I re that it made me really hang on to this one. And that is that it's built on human wisdom and values. Amen. So more than anything, you know, of course we know these bad things. The, the Holy Spirit is there to, to warn us of these, these bad things. And we see it with our eyes all of the evil that runs rapid in the world. But also, it's, it's as I said, and it's built on human wisdom and values. So with that being said, have you ever heard of the term human error? Yeah. Happens all the time. Right? So the thing is, is to be conformed to the world, to be that, that means that we are doing what people want and not what the Lord wants. That's right. That's good. Because, you know, we can't continue. We have to set ourselves apart. Yes. Um, with that being said, I, I thought about that and I thought about, and, and this is what really brought this on to me. I had a person come to me in the bank the other day, and, and pretty much everyone kind of knows that, that I go to church and that I sing and that I participate in my church and that I'm very active in my church and stuff. And there was a lady that came in, and she, we started talking about church, and she was telling me that, uh, you know, that she, she went to uh, the, I forget what the church is down there. It's uh, Church of Christ, that big church on, on, on the four lane there. Yeah, yeah, yeah Shamba. And uh, it was funny how she said it because she, she asked me, she said, uh, where do you go to church? And here's the thing, it's funny because people now, before, uh, 
a long time ago, I knew what she wanted, and she wanted me to tell her what my religion was. Right. Yeah. And um, I, I kind of, I, I told her, I said, I go to Tug River Community Church, and uh, that wasn't enough. So she just flat out asked me, well, um, what, what, what do you believe? Are, are you Baptist or, or are you Church of Christ? Are you all Methodist? And I, I just looked at her and I smiled and I said, well, I'm a Christian. Amen. 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 <laughs> and, uh, and, yeah, yeah. So uh, she, she kind of let it go and, and moved on and about her ways and this and that. And, um, so with that being said, you know, I, I thought about that and I thought, to conform to something, and and there have been people who from religions that have have you know deeply hurt me from from things that have been said and this and that, and uh, I started thinking about religion. So as I was in my study there, I, I I looked up the term religion. Okay, now get this one. Do you know what the definition for religion is? If you don't, I got it right here. Amen. Uh, <laughs> It is a commitment or devotion to a certain faith or observance. Right. Okay. All right. Let's hang on to that for just a second. The word religion means commitment or devotion to a certain faith or observance. All right. With that being said, there's going to be a holiday coming Monday. This, com this coming Monday, right. I won't be at work because we are going to have Martin Luther King Day. Right. Okay, and on that day, we know what happened, and, and I completely support him and believe in his dream for equality, and I think it's a wonderful thing Amen. how far we've came with, with, with that and, you know, the, the racism, equality, and all that, and I think it's wonderful. And I'm not going to go to work that day. And on that day, there's going to be, I may even read some articles, maybe watch some TV shows about Martin Luther King and this and that. But let me tell you something. By the definition of religion, mm -hmm. it, it, since I'm observing that, that means that I'm religious to Martin Luther King. That's good. Yeah, that's right. I never okay. thought about it. It's good. Yep. Yeah. Now, faith. Okay. When I leave here, mm -hmm. My car that's sitting out there, it's fairly new. We keep the oil changed on a regular basis. Haven't had any problems out of it. Got a full tank of gas. Now, unless it's something of my own stupidity in which I make a mistake, I have faith that that car is going to get me home safely. Yeah. By the definition of religion, I'm religious to my car. So with that being said, you can be religious to a lot of things. The only thing that I don't see anything in religion, I don't see in that in that text, is to be to be have a commitment or devotion to Jesus Christ. See, there's a lot of things, and you can be religious to Jesus Christ, but the thing is, is there's a lot of other things that you can be religious to. So with that being said, we have to set that mark up. I don't think that Jesus and the Lord and, and his power and all of his mind should be in a bracket with other things. So with that being said, religion in itself is a commitment or devotion to a certain faith or observance. Which means that if, if I say that I'm, if I'm Baptist, then I'm religious to being a Baptist. If I say that I'm Pentecostal, then I'm, 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 I'm religious to the, to the faith, not to the person who drives it. So with that being said, religion is a set of rules. But guess who those are made by? Man. Man. Religion tells me that in order to be a Christian, that in order to be Christ-like, I have to act or conform to a certain way that is a, a way that is made by man. A, a way that someone says, you have to do this, 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 and this to be a Christian.
Christian, or better yet, you have to not do this, 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 and this to be a Christian. But, you know, our Bible says that he seems to make a way when there seems to be no way. So here's the thing. What I'm saying is, if we can get in our minds and get in this mindset that, that, that we're not religious, we're Christians. Right. We're people who are striving to be like Christ. Amen. Are we going to fail? Yes. We're going to fail a lot. But because we know who can help us and how, who we know who we can call on, we, we, can, we can get up again, he'll watch us rise again, and he'll help us. Amen. With that being said, religion doesn't do that. Religion is going to bound you to a certain conformity when Jesus wants to set you free. Amen. So, honestly, I think that as a, as a whole, I think that as a whole church, and I'm not saying a church, I mean the church, the church of Christ, I think that we have spent a lot of time a lot of time in our in our past years and our past times trying to conform to religion instead of trying to conform to Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. So with that being said, we have all of these things that are happening. You know, what would happen if just like, and I've said this before here, when, when I spoke before, on the day of Pentecost it said they were all in one mind and one accord. Okay, I don't think what that meant was that they said, okay, we're going to use this instruction of, of, of rules here, and we're going to go in, and we're going to preach this way, and we're going to teach this way, and we're going to sing these songs, and then we're going to have prayer, and we're going to go home. No, I don't think that's what they meant when they said they were all in one mind and one accord. What I think they meant when they said that was that they all gathered together. And these people, all of these people said, you know what? I don't care what the person beside me is doing. I don't care what this person is saying. All I'm saying is that I'm here to seek God. And when every person had that mindset, that's when the Lord blessed them. We spend a lot of time. We, I've seen so many young people afraid to give their life to God. And it all has to do with religion. Yeah. They don't know what to believe. They don't know what not to believe. And it's because people, and it's us. It's us who are Christians. And I'm not saying us in particular. I'm just saying yeah. as Christians, it's us who look at them and say, no, you got to do this, you got to do that. You know, you got to have this, you got to have that. And, and, it, and it scares people away. You know, I, I, it, it just, it makes me tired. It makes me tired to think of all of the people who could, and here's what has happened. Could you imagine what this community would be if, if every church said, forget about it, we're going to use this word as our foundation. Amen. And we're just going to seek the Lord. Amen. Whatever that may be, we're just going to seek the Lord. There would be an eruption that would have this warfare that has happened. That we are being betrayed. And this is, this is scary because it seems like, it just seems like within, since I graduated high school in 2006, when you hear of a Christian, when even when in 2006, you heard of a person uh, uh, that was a Christian, you thought, that's a good person. You know, that's someone who's trying to live right. That's someone who's trying to do this. There's someone who's trying to do that. They're trying to, they're trying to live for the Lord. They're setting good examples. But what's happening now, and just since then, look at the media. And it's not so much in this area because we kind of live in a very, uh, uh, I guess the Bible Belt is what you call it. We, we're, we're more focused on the Lord. But outside of this, at, uh, in this world as a whole, if you watch TV and you listen to art and you read articles and you listen to things, let me tell you something. Christians now 
are being betrayed as the bad guys. Yes, they are. And a lot of it has to do with religion. A lot of it has to do with, I, we have ourselves to blame, in a sense. Because there is a, like I said, there's a religious warfare going on. There's so much bickering back and forth between us that Satan has done this and placed these, these rules. Instead of focusing on the Word of God, he's placed these rules in these churches. And then they're going back and forth as to, no, you, you don't believe this way or you don't believe that way. And what happens is... He's got us so busy bickering back and forth between each other that we can't do anything for the world. And, and, and that's what I'm saying. I just want, I want us to, to be aware of that and to, to see that today when the Lord spoke to me this verse and be not conformed to this world. Now, I know, I know that we aren't supposed to act like this world, and I know that we don't do that as Christians, but yet when I heard that, I thought, be not conformed to this world, and, and I thought about religion, and how religion was man-made or world-made, and not Lord-made, and, and I thought, to me, that it just spoke to me that that tells us right there, you know, if, if we just use our Bible as our foundation, if, if this is what we stand on, then we're not conforming to the world. We're not saying, I'm a Baptist, or I'm a Pentecostal, or I'm a Methodist. We're saying, you know what? Come be with us because we're just a child of the King. And, and to me, that just, that, that spoke volumes unto me today. With that being said, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to a close here, guys. <laughs> I've spent all of, what, 10 minutes? <laughs> but it's okay. I, just, that has really been on my heart to share. And, uh, you know, that, I feel like that's what the, the Lord placed on my heart today. And I just want, again, if we could just encourage people to stop worrying about, you know, what, what they have to be or what they don't have to be. And just, you know, seek the Lord for what it is. And you all know I always end with a, a, a prayer. And, and again... I hope that you took something from that and it makes you want to kind of delve a little bit deeper into, into what we talked about and stuff. And, uh, it, it, uh, really, it just made me want to tell people the truth about the Lord. That, that bottom line, I just want them to know God. And I want them to know Him for who He really is and not for, you know, whatever it is that everybody else is telling them that he is. I think one of the things that I spent a lot of time in my life, I don't know, relying on everybody else's way and relying on everybody else to tell me that this is, this is what you have to do and this is what you have to do. But there was no blessings that came from that. Until one day, I decided that, and, and God, God used people in my life to point me to studying myself. I think it's very important that we know, we have an understanding through the word of who Jesus is. Because if we don't have an understanding for ourselves, then, then again, we're in trouble. Because we're relying on other people to tell us. And, and, and through that word that he speaks, there comes knowledge. And through that knowledge, I've gained such a deeper relationship with God. Because he, he, this, this book wasn't written by mistake. This book gives me insight to, to him. And, and through that, he speaks to me. 
And there are times that even, you know, when, when we're, when I'm praying to God and, and I tell him that, like you said, you, you tell him all these things that you, you, you need and you, you feel, you know, you feel your prayers with all these things that I want, I want, I want, I want. And, and even so, you, you spend that time, and as Pastor talked about this week, you know, we, so we change that, and we just start praising Him, and, and we just start thanking Him. But the other aspect of that, and, and my favorite aspect, is when I have done this, and the blessings begin to pour down on me as I pray, and I stand still. And I'll be quiet. And he begins to speak to me. And those are the moments. Those are the moments that we grow from. Those are the moments that we live for. And, and, and the word of encouragement to the world isn't that they need to be a Baptist or a Pentecostal or a Methodist. But it's that, that sweet voice, that ultimate healer, they can have it too. Father God, we thank you so much for this evening. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for all that you've done, God. We thank you for the opportunity of you getting to speak to us, God. Because we don't deserve it. But you choose to do it anyway because you love us so much. Father, we ask you to just continue in our lives, God. Let us not be conformed to this world. Let us not be bound by religion. But we just ask you to set us free in you. Because we are Christians. We are your children. And we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.